Talking today to Niall Murphy, who is a South African serial entrepreneur, who is the CEO of two companies, Marmalade and Everything. Niall, tell me what Everything is. So Everything is a uh, software company. Um, our purpose is to manage identities for physical objects on the web. And what does that actually mean? What kind of physical objects are you talking about? So we're typically talking about products. Yeah. Uh, physical products, so a car or um, a bottle, uh, a fridge, a fridge, something like that. Yeah. And uh, the challenge is, how does a manufacturer of that product digitally augment that, add digital services to that uh, product? It might be something very simple, like redeeming the warranty electronically instead of filling in a reply paid postcard, mm. or it might be something smarter about sort of how the, how the product uh, communicates with the electricity grid, for example, to, to, to figure out when to switch itself on and off. Um, but to do that, it needs a software presence within the web. We were talking earlier about this being like the Facebook of things, as it were. So describe what, what if you're a manufacturer of, of say, a, of some household good, what, what would you be getting? What's the... Well, uh, uh, what Facebook does is it, it gives a human being an identity on the web that whether the person happens to be connected to their computer or not, anybody else can go to that, that Facebook page and learn about that person, find out things about them, see their pictures, etc. So what everything's doing is providing the same capability for a product. Um, and a manufacturer can uh, use this as a, as a channel to, uh, to, to communicate directly with the, the, the owner of their product. Um, and the owner of the product can also respond, presumably. They via... can communicate with it. Yeah. So typically the relationship that a manufacturer has or doesn't have with their, with their, with their customer, uh, you know, they sell the product through a retail store, but mm. they don't know who buys it. Right? Mm. Um, let's just take a pair of running shoes. You buy a mm. new pair of running shoes, you don't, you know, the manufacturer doesn't know who bought the running shoes, so they want to come up with ways of, of, of getting you to tell them who you are. Mm. Um, you're really only going to do that if you if you have a reason to talk to them. And that mm. might be to get a warranty or what have you, but it, it's it's more likely to be to do with the fact that you you want some other services that come with the running shoes. What if the running shoes can measure your runs for you, tell you mm. how far you ran, etc. Mm. Right, and you need software to do that. So that's what this is making possible. So it, one thing is the relationship between people who sell things and the, cons the consumer. Yeah. The, the other one is actually the control function, isn't it? So describe to me a little more the kinds of things it might be able to get devices to do. Well, if we want to actually uh, instruct a, 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 or provide information to a car, mm -hmm. um, the car may not be connected all the time, so it needs to reach out into the web. and and uh, collect information, if you like, mm. right? So think of this as being a container for the information that's sitting within the web, mm. and occasionally the car can ask it a question and download an instruction, yeah. download a, a, a piece of updated navigational information or, or, or something like that. Or similarly, the car can pass information to that storage location and uh, somebody else can ask it a question. So what we're seeing is lots of apps being built um, that are, are trying to exploit information from and about objects. Objects themselves being occasionally connected mm. um, and, uh, and needing to either collect information or occasionally provide bits of information. Um, how, how do those two things connect with each other? And, that's and using the car example, it could, it could look at the consumption of various things within the car, petrol, oil, those kinds of things, yeah. and it could also look at how long certain things last. Yeah. So there's a kind of... Yeah, so yeah, the expression is well, data is the, ne the new oil, right? We're yeah. in a world of very rich flows of information, mm -hmm. and uh, part of the challenge is, is how to make that information easily accessible. Mm. Um, because it's all very well having all this data, but if it's very hard to reach and mm. hard to access, that's that's you know that's not very helpful. Um, and it's it's also probably unlikely that the uh, person who's issuing the data is probably not the person who's building the application to exploit mm. the data. And so, you know, what we expect to see is a very heterogeneous world of lots of different types of objects putting out mm. lots of information, um, and applications trying to mash that information up to, mm. to, to create value. So they have to figure out how to connect with each other, right? Yeah. If they do connect with each other, they have to have some trust that the data that, that they're accessing came from that object. Mm. Um, obviously, 
you know, if this is private data, you want to yeah. know who it's being shared with. Yeah. There has to be good control and management around that. And how do you manage the relationship between the, if you like, the, fa the fridge's Facebook page and the physical fridge? What's to prove that the physical fridge actually relates to the domain, as it were? Well, you know, as with anything, there's a, um, there is a step of trust where perhaps the manufacturer of the, of the, of the fridge is putting a, um, a chip into the fridge for it to communicate mm. and there's a, a certificate which will authenticate that communication of mm. the fridge with its online identity. So that process of how one actually deploys the tagging of an object and how it communicates with its web identity, there has to be a trust and authentication to that. Mm. Once that's done, once, then it's there, it's mm. in place. It's like issuing a certificate to a server, mm. um, and, and then you can build on that. Yeah. The last time we spoke, you were an investor and one of the people running the cloud, which was a Wi-Fi cloud, um, and we talked about voice becoming something that would work through the cloud and, and the cloud becoming ubiquitous. How far do you think we've got in that process? You've now sold out of the cloud, mm -hmm. so you're kind of looking back at this. How, how far do you think that vision has been realised? Oh, I think it's come quite a long way, but it's probably still um, early, early days still, mm. right? So the cloud was a, a wireless broadband company, Wi-Fi a network operator. We became, in fact, the largest public Wi-Fi network operator in Europe before we, before we sold. And, and um, that was at the beginning of the emergence of the mobile mm. internet. Um, and I, I think there's been a huge transition now to the expectation, the, cons the consumer expectation mm. of wireless broadband as being the natural way that you connect to the internet. Mm. Uh, people don't run around looking for ethernet ports in the wall. Mm. They run around looking for Wi-Fi networks mm. or connecting to the 3G network. That's mm. what broadband is, which mm. is a big behavioral change, mm. right? Um, broadband used to be defined as the box in the corner of the mm. room, not not the air that is swirling around you. And I think that people have also transitioned to an expectation that all services are delivered by IP. Yes. So um, a voice is something that you get from Skype, right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. and uh, um, that's a... Uh, that, that, that's, that's something that increasingly one sees on PCs. You know, you see the, the guys in the airport, you know, hunched over their machines, kind yeah. of talking to the screen. Yeah. But, how quickly do you think that's happened with mobile? Because it does seem to me that's the next transition. Those powerful devices you were talking about earlier becoming the voice device. Yeah, I think I think that well, voice is just an app, an app, right? Yes. And and I think it's important to recognise that in in the mobile internet world, it is just an app, mm. and people will use voice when it's the convenient medium to use. Mm. Um, but actually, as we've seen, even on conventional mobile networks, mm. text messaging now outstrips voice traffic, mm. right? Because actually people prefer to communicate them mm. like that, right? Yes. Um, it's quicker than a conversation. Yeah. And I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question of the quality of networks, actually. Mm. I don't live in the UK, I live in Switzerland. Mm. And in Switzerland, I can use Skype on my iPhone mm. over the 3G network perfectly. Yes. Um, with video. Yeah. Um, and that's because Swisscom have disproportionately invested in the capacity of their network. Yeah. So it's possible and doable and it'll work. Um, and you know, the UK, there's a much more capacity constrained network environment here. Yeah. Um, but it's just a matter of time before that the, 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 those the, things the, even sort of, out. The standard service level is high enough whereby that's the default. And then I look at my, you know, my 11 year old son, in his mind, there is no difference between making a call utilizing um, his Skype and making a call utilizing the call function on his phone. He's making a call. Mm. He doesn't. He hasn't. He hasn't experienced a world where mm. where there was yeah. whether that was, a where, big choice had to be made. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's just how do you? Yeah. yeah. How do you do it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think that that that, that that's how it'll be going forward. Now, the infrastructure is still weak, so mm. mobile networks have got just about the right... They were never designed for data, were they, really? They were never designed, and they were never designed by engineers who were designed for data. They yeah. were designed by voice switch engineers, which yeah. is a problem. Um, so there's a running battle in capacity yeah. on, the, on, on the mobile networks. Per, per capita, you know, data footprint is mm. big and growing fast. Um, and and uh, the problem when, uh, when, when GPUs 
uh, graphic processor units you know go mm. up at, by 8x in their performance mm. capacity in 12 months um, and the network capacity goes up by 20 percent in its mm. performance capacity in, 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 in 12 months yes so it's clearly a going to be a problem in data data throughput. That's, right? the te- that's the technology problem. There's also a business model problem, isn't there? Which yeah. is actually how do you recoup money yeah. from yeah. the So you know, our, our thesis with the, with the cloud is that yeah. people would, that mobile operators would be motivated to offload traffic from the, from mm. the, from the broadband network, from the, from the, uh, the mobile network onto, onto local Wi-Fi mm. networks, which is exactly what's happening and that's, mm. you know, that's being driven quite extensively now. We just need more Wi-Fi networks. Mm. So, and when we sold the cloud, we had 20,000 Wi-Fi access points. The UK probably needs to have at least a quarter of a million mm. in, in dense urban environments in mm. order to meet the capacity requirement of mm. the public today. That investment is going on mm. um, by, the, by, the, by the large operators now, and, and yeah, they'll fill out. Yeah. Niall, thanks for talking to me today. It's a pleasure.